Good afternoon. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, as we are celebrating the 10th Ordinary Sunday, where Jesus our Savior is calling us to know what are the characteristics of a good disciple to be a member of Christ's family, God's family. For the times that we fail to know this and follow Jesus our Savior to be in his family, let's ask the merciful Lord to forgive us and give us his grace and peace. I confess to Almighty God and to the Lord of the that I am greatly to sin in my thoughts and my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my fault, through my fault, through my fault. Therefore, I ask the Lord of Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and human rights of brothers and sisters, to pray for me toward our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
despre O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. After the man, Adam, had eaten of the tree, the Lord God called to the man and asked him, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid myself. Then he asked, who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat. The man replied, the woman whom you put here with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, the serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offsprings and hers he will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. The word of the Lord. My 
my soul trust in his word more than sentinels wait for the dawn let israel wait for the lord with the lord there is mercy and for kindness and with him is plenteous redemption and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities with the Lord there is mercy and for A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed, therefore I spoke, we too believe and therefore we speak, knowing that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Therefore, we are not discouraged. Rather, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to what is seen, but to what is unseen. For what is seen is transitory, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. The word of the Lord. world will be driven out says the Lord and when I am lifted up from the earth I will draw everyone to myself The Lord be with you. With Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus came home with his disciples. Again, the crowd gathered, making it impossible for them even to eat. When his relatives heard of this, they set out to seize him, for they said, he is out of his mind. The scribes 
who had come from Jerusalem said, he is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons, he drives out demons. <clears throat> Summoning them, he began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. That is the end of him. But no one can enter a strong man's house to plunder his property unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can plunder the house. Amen. I say to you, all sins and all blasphemies that people utter will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an everlasting sin. But they had said, he has an unclean spirit. His mother and his brothers arrived Standing outside, they sent word to him and called him. A crowd seated around him told him, Your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside asking for you. But he said to them in reply, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking around at those seated in the circle, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Now, for Pentecost, we have been celebrating some of the solemnities, and last Sunday we have celebrated Corpus Christi, and then some places they celebrate Sacred Heart on Sunday or Friday. But in our diocese, we celebrated Sacred Heart of Jesus on Friday, and followed by the Immaculate Heart of Mary. If you see the Sacred Heart of Jesus, you will have a cross, and then you will have a heart that is bleeding, and then thorns around the heart. The cross, we know, is because Christ, out of love, died for all of us on the cross. So that's why we have this cross on the sacred heart. And the heart that is bleeding, like whenever we disobey to God's commandments, we lose that grace. And when we lose that grace in God, we have a disconnection with him. So that's why we have a heart that is bleeding. Then we have the thorns around the sacred heart. So the thorns are kind of a reminder, like as St. Paul is saying to Corinthians today, through his letter, accept all the suffering with love. Accept all the pain with love. Accept all the challenges with love, that you will see the strength of God guiding you and you will have glory that you will experience in your own life. And that's why we have this beautiful image of sacred heart with a cross, a heart that is bleeding and a crown of thorns around that heart. And then we have also immaculate heart. Immaculate heart, Mary, who is completely obedient to God, and she is just there to do the will of God, only the will of God. So these two fees are so well connected to the readings that we have today. Like in the first reading, we have from the book of Genesis. First two chapters of the book of Genesis, we hear about the creation story. When we hear about creation story, we also understand 
the disobedience of Adam and Eve. Like they are blaming each other. And then Jesus is asking Adam, Adam, where are you? It does not mean that Jesus is not aware where Adam is. Where are you in your relationship with me? And that is exactly what God is asking Adam. Adam, where are you? Like Jesus would, God would visit them every, every time that he goes to garden, but he never asked him. He never asked them, where are you? But this is the first time that God is asking, Adam, where are you? Because Adam had already disobedient, showed that disobedience to God and to his commandment. That's why God is asking Adam, where are you in your relationship to me or with me? And this is exactly what God will ask us. Whenever we disobey God's commandments, whenever we kind of fail to keep God's commandments, whenever we somehow influenced by Satan and distance ourselves from God, and God will ask us, my child, where are you? We know through the creation story, because of their disobedience, sin came into this world. Uh, through sin we have suffering, and through suffering we have death. But God does not want us to die. That's why there is a kind of exegesis in which it says, like the, all the animals were so happy because God answered them. Looking upon that, Adam and Eve went and asked, like, you know, you granted everything that they wanted. What about us? And then God told them, you are the only one we have the privilege of looking to the skies, looking to the heaven. But all other animals will look down to the earth because that is their place. But you will have a place with me in my kingdom when you come back for my mercy. And to some extent, it makes sense. Yes, God told us that we will be his children in his kingdom. So how do we gain that kingdom? How do we be God's children? And that's what St. Paul says through his letter. You will have challenges, you will have pain, you will have suffering, you will have all the possible difficulties in your journey. But that doesn't mean God is letting your hand go. God is always holding your hand. God is always strengthening you. God is always spiritually filling you with his grace. And St. Paul says, that has been my experience. In my own life, I do see so many challenges, but at the same time, I also experience God's strength and grace in my life. And that's why this is connected to the sacred heart. We should accept our heart, our soul will definitely go through so many emotions, pain, suffering, psychological, spiritual emotions. But one thing we have to remember is that God is always there to strengthen us. And while St. Paul is saying that to all of us, we ourselves have to know that we shouldn't be disconnected from God by our disobedience. If we do that, we have the sacrament of reconciliation where we can come back and experience His grace. That's why in the gospel today, there are so many people that are telling to Jesus that, oh, he is going out of his mind, he went out of his mind, he is doing a lot of things with the help of Beelzebul, and then Jesus is trying to help them understand how can a divided family can stand against it and fight. How can you, if you are so disturbed and there is no connection between, coherence between your mind and your soul, and then how can you not be disturbed in the world? That you will be lost. You will be lost. That's why there should be coherence between your mind and your soul, your heart. We should be able to know what you're thinking is right and what you're doing is right. It's not harming others. It's not harming yourself. And then know that there is peace in what you're thinking. If that connection is not there, 
you see you are lost you'll fail you'll walk in the darkness and that's what jesus is saying when you say that i am doing all this with velizab with the help of velizabel how can this be possible and while jesus explaining this to them jesus also speaks about uh, um, being a spiritual family somebody said to jesus oh your father your mother your brothers sisters are here like in greek like when you call brother it also denotes like your cousins it's not that oh somebody said in the bible so your brothers the sisters which means uh, jesus is having other siblings no we also priests like call you the brothers and sisters in christ jesus like we are all brothers and sisters it doesn't mean that we are siblings but still we have the same spiritual bonding in christ so while jesus is told that you have your mother and father brothers and sisters then jesus says uh, who are my brothers and sisters those who do the will of my father in the old testament and in the new testament if you see if there is one who did the will of god the father that is our blessed mother and jesus is not denying the fact that blessed mother is mother of jesus but jesus says you should look more than that more than biological relationship there is a, a spiritual relationship where we will all truly be god's children in his kingdom that's why jesus is saying whoever does the will of my father and mary is the one who did the will of his father all through her life without any doubt and then now jesus says that you if you do will of my father that you will be my brothers and sisters that's why jesus told his apostles in the gospel according to mark i will not call you as say slaves as servants but i will call you as my brothers jesus himself is telling his apostles i will not call you as servants or slaves but i will call you as my brothers so what should we do what should we do to be in the family of god and to be his children in his kingdom we need to remember three things the first thing is experience of god's mercy we all should experience god's mercy and the second thing is we have a common interest the common interest is that we should keep his law keeping his commandments a common experience is experiencing god's mercy a common interest is obeying to god's commandment a common goal is that we witness god's love through our very exemplary life so these are the three things that we need to remember the first one common experience that we should all experience god's mercy the second thing is common interest the interest is that we should obey god's commandments and the third thing is common goal that we should share god's love to others and this is what will help us be children of god and then where jesus can call us in his kingdom these are my brothers and my sisters and those are the characteristics that christ want to tell us today through the gospel that we be his children in his kingdom where he calls us because you have done the will of my father you will be my brothers and my sisters in this holy eucharistic celebration let's ask the good lord for teaching us this that we will be experiencing his mercy we will be obeying to his commandments and then we will be sharing his love to others god bless us all let us now profess our faith i believe in one god maker of heaven and earth all things for all men i believe in May God to not be unsubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us and not for our salvation, be given out in heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, 
भजन कर तो वचन मेरे अंबे के में Let us turn to God our Father in faith and ask him to bless all our intentions and needs. For the church, may Christ continue to guide her steps as she brings the message of salvation to all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace throughout the world, may it begin in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have wandered from the faith, may God's love guide them back into his loving arms. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community gathered here, may God help us to have eyes to see and ears to hear those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Joanne E. Sanchez, John Cambra, Martha Hernandez, Arnold Rothlin, Laura Rothlin. May God welcome them into his eternal kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. Let us remember to pray for all those people who have asked of us to pray for them and to whom we said we will pray for their intentions and all those who needed to obey to God's commandment and come back to his life and walk in his light to be called as his brothers and sisters. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear in the silence of our hearts, let's pray for our own intentions. Most loving and merciful Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, who teaches us all the time that we be enlightened in our soul to have fullness of life with him in your kingdom. As we have come before you with all our intentions, if it is your will, bless them and grant them to us through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up, Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, our blessed chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Myron our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all we were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we all dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, 
look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Now joyfully let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his banquet.
long before the mountains came to be, and the land and sea and stars of the night, through the endless seasons of all time, you have always been.
Let us pray. May your healing work, O oh Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil and lead us to what is right through Christ our Lord. Amen. Kindly be seated for the announcements. In preparation of the 2024 Harvest Festival, we will be selling raffle tickets after Mass starting June 8th until all the tickets are sold. Only 500 tickets will be sold at $100 each. Attention young adults between the ages of 18 to 35, the Diocese of Stockton <clears throat> will be holding a valley-wide young adults Mass next Saturday, June 15th, at St. Joseph's in Modesto. Candlelight Mass will begin at 7.30 and will be followed with refreshments and fellowship. <clears throat> is your child ready for preschool? St. Anthony's Preschool is currently accepting applications for the school year 2024-2025. To apply or to obtain more information about our program, please visit the school website at www.sasmanteca.org or contact the preschool director, Jennifer Dolan. The Italian Catholic Federation invites you to the Bishop's Burst Dinner on Saturday, June 22nd, after the 5 p.m. Mass by Bishop Cotta. Tickets for the dinner will be sold in the vestibule this weekend after the 5 p.m., 8.45 and 10.45 Masses. All proceeds go towards our seminarians. For more information on these announcements, please see our parish website. So we have a letter from the bishop. Uh, there is an announcement, so I'll be reading out that letter to you. My dear people of St. Anthony, I write to you first to give thanks to God for your priest, Father Madhu, Apanapali, Father has worked hard during his years of service to your parish, and I am grateful for the ministerial relationship that he has been able to establish with you all, all of you. Because of some important moves that I am making this summer regarding priest assignments, I have asked Father Mother to answer a call to a service as parochial vicar in the beautiful parish community of the church at the presentation in Stockton. Father will begin his new assignment on July 1st, 2024. And I ask that you keep him in your prayers. In Father Smadhu's place, I am pleased to announce that beginning July 1st, 2024, Father Ramakoti Sakini will join your parish and pastoral staff 
as the new parochial vicar. Father Ramakoti is a newly arrived international priest, and I look forward to the excellent work that the Holy Spirit will accomplish in him as he now begins his service to all of you. My brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, thank you so much for all the support that you have given to Father Madhu and to the Diocese of Stockton and the continued support that we'll now offer to your new parochial vicar, Father Ramakoti, when he arrives on July 1st, 2024. Be assured of my prayers during this time of transition. In the peace of Christ, Bishop Myron J. Carter. So Father Madhu will be leaving us uh, July 1st. Sometimes like these transitions, it's good for priests sometimes, you know? And sometimes it's good for parishioners too, right? So it's both ways. And of course, Bishop will have his own challenges, like given to his situation there, he will have to, by all means, make certain moves. So therefore, we have to keep Bishop in our minds and prayers, and then also all the priests that are having these moves, July, effective July 1st. So keep them in your prayers, and they'll be going to another parish, and the good Lord will be with them. So Father Madhu will be coming back on the 13th. He did not have much time to be around us. So on 29th, Saturday, uh, we will have a bilingual mass, like we'll have only 5 p.m. mass, and then we'll have a farewell to Father Madhu. And also on the same day, Father Alvaro is celebrating his priestly anniversary. So we'll combine together and we'll have a wonderful celebration for Father Madhu and for Father Alvaro. So in the meanwhile, just keep our diocese in your prayers, our bishop in your prayers, and all the priests that are transitioning to other parishes. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen. You all have a blessed evening. Lord.